All right, this video is gonna be a midnight video where I'm gonna show you how to make a battery pack using these SPIM 08 HP. So what's so interesting about these cells? Uh, well, not much. They're pouch, lipo pouches, right? Um, high power, these can do about uh, 200 amps or about 25C. Uh, I did a test on that video. Uh, you could probably click right here on top of this video and then see that video. Uh, but there's a ton of them available, right? Uh, Tom at batteryhookup.com has a ton, uh, you know, a warehouse full of them with like a lot of, you know, pallets and pallets of them. And so uh, they're affordable right and so they're super cells these things could do a lot of power out so not everybody needs a uh you know a high performance cells like this in fact today we're gonna build a pack that looks something like this right and it's not we're not gonna use it for high power but we're just gonna use it and, and the idea behind using these cell instead of some other cells is that they're affordable and because these are high performance cells when you use them in non-performance applications then they're going to last you for a long time and they're going to be safe right because you're not going to be stressing them out so first things to do is we're going to make a 24 volt pack using seven of them here are seven i already uh prepared them because all i had to do is bend them like this because they come with like this thing where they're like big right and so you fold the edges and then you use, uh, I just use clear tape to, to fold them back there. So now they're ready to be put into a pack and it's going to be compact uh, and it's just better, right? So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to lay them all on a table here. I suggest you kind of do this to make sure that you start with a good pack. Um, I guess the best way it would be to start with cells that are completely discharged or completely charged but i don't that's not what's going to happen here i know that tom look at that okay so we're going to check voltage right 3.76 3 3.70 3.79 3.74 3.73 3.74 yeah so they're all um around the 3.7 voltage which is good for them to be uh, close together in voltage when you put them together that way your BMS is not gonna work really hard We are gonna install a BMS on this one. Let's start So first things you do is you get the negative uh, We're going to attach them together. We're gonna use these eyelids, right? They're made out of brass and you use these little tools uh, And I have links on the bottom of this video to show you where to buy these. These are cheap They're like one use uh, this is towards the end of its life. It doesn't cut as good as they do when they're brand new. So they're kind of throwaway tools. They don't cost much, right? So what you do, so we'll use three of these. And what you want to do is change it like this, flip it around. Then this one is sucks, so I'm using this one. It works a little bit better. Then you squeeze, and then it just pinches the whole thing right there. All right. There we go. Then you flip it over, and that's going to be the negative side of the cell. So the next thing you got to do is you're just going to want to tape that up. All right. Then you put the next one. Here we go. You just line it up. You use this guy. You make a hole. Then you put a little thing here. All right. And then you do that twice. More. And here, one there. And there we go. Those are pinch and they're, you know, holding the two tabs together here. So then hopefully that's going to be good enough to transfer. I don't know. That's probably good for 50, 60, 100 amps or something. We can test that out. All right. There's going to be some people that are going to ask, what about galvanic corrosion? And galvanic corrosion is a thing that happens when you have dissimilar metals. When you have metals that are different and you have them put together and then you, you run energy, you know, electricity through them. That is a concern in certain applications. It is not really a concern on this one. Or if it is, 
Uh, there's nothing we can do about it because this is this is aluminum and this is copper plated. Uh, and so the this is a different metal than this metal. So there's no way to have similar metals while you're attaching these things here. So adding a different metal to the mix here, whatever. It's just it's just the thing that it's all that you're already gonna have to deal with this. And so I don't know if at this voltages that makes a difference or not. There's nothing you can do about it. Like I said, you just have to deal with it because that's the nature of these batteries. They come with a copper anode and a aluminum cathode or whatever. So I'm just putting tape here so that you make sure that you don't short them out. So we do another one here. So one question someone might ask is what are these batteries good for? These are great for high power applications, right? But we're not, on this particular application, we're not going to use them in high power um, scenario. So you could use them for low power. Now you gotta you gotta make sure the positive negative positive negative right that's that's gotta pay attention to that. We're gonna make an extension pack for our solar generator from a video that I made about a month ago. But you could use these on anything that needs 24 volts. For example, here you use seven of them in series, or you use uh, 14 of them in series, and then you can make a 48 volt. Uh, 48 volt pack. Uh, you could use 10 in series and then you can do 36 volts which is useful for e-bikes and uh, skateboards and scooters and stuff like that. Um, yeah, these batteries could basically do it all. Alright, and to make the positive side. Alright, at this point you turn on your soldering irons. Here we go. This is going to be the BMS 24 volts, 20 amps, 7S. You heard that right. We're going to be throttling this battery pack down to 20 amps. That might seem like it's a dumb thing to do, such a capable battery, to throttle it down to this, but not really. For our application, we don't need much than 20 amps. Uh, we need about 100 amps maximum on the battery on the on the device that we're going to be doing and I'm going to have about six of these batteries so 20 times six it's about 120 that's about enough to supply so these are really cheap they're about 10 bucks so why not use these right okay so what we're going to do is we're going to cut these here there we go have to put solder on that there we go that's the one that one's easy because it was really pretty thin so then we soldered them right up to here. Look at that. Right here it helps to use a secondary iron, soldering iron. Alright, so on the BMS board you have to look at, this is battery minus, so this is the cable, so it's the other one. It's C minus. You have to try to squeeze that 12 gauge cable right through that little hole. Sometimes you're not going to be able to get every strand across. So you just try to do your best. Whatever doesn't go out, then you just cut it. So then you take another piece over here. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna cut that. Make sure you close your eyes. Look at that. That was beautiful. Just where this is going to go. Right, right about here. Right, so to help you do that, then you use this tape. This is called Captain Tape. And this tape right here is very important for you to use because this is high temperature tape. This thing will withstand I want to say probably hundreds of degrees. I don't know, like, you know, a couple hundred degrees Fahrenheit or something. So if your battery ever catches fire or heats up or whatever, then this thing is going to hold. It's not going to melt this tape. 
very easily. Here we go. So then we connect this cable next. Let's do the, the negative first. So the same thing. Bend it where you want it. Then you score it here. Alright, so now we do the same thing. Everybody knows how to connect the BMS, right? And if you don't, well, this is the positive, this is the negative, and then all the other cell terminals go right here in order, sequential order right here, actually. All right? So let's do the, the negative, because that's where we're at right now. So we'll just do that. And of course, for those who don't know, a BMS is a battery management system. It's basically a switch with um, cell individual cell monitoring, right? So what it does, it it looks at what each cell is doing, right? And if the cells are within a certain voltage, right? Operating voltage, safe operating voltage on lithium ion batteries is uh, 4.2 volts at the very top and then um, down to about two and a half volts right so if it's within those within those, that voltage then it opens up the little switch right and the switch are solid state switches they're just uh, you know, they're just transistors, basically. MOSFETs, or whatever you want to call them. Um, I think this particular version here of the BMS will uh, disconnect the battery once the, the cells, any of the cells, hit 3 volts or lower. Right? And these are, you know... These are cheapy BMSs. They're really inexpensive. They're ten dollars. They're not the best quality, but for this project, we don't really need anything special. We just need something that works, something that will disconnect the battery, you know, at the bottom, uh, and it will balance. It's actually also balanced if at the top, you know, one of the batteries hits 4.2 volts first before all the other ones then it'll start burning energy on that one battery and will allow the rest of them to catch up at the very end they it tries to put all the cells at the same at the same voltage of 4.2 volts at the top and when you charge them then all the cells should be at that level there now at this point I'm going to add another piece of tape here because this battery is kind of flimsy still. I still haven't wrapped it once all the way across. There we go. Look at that. There we go. Ooh, 41. How long is it going to take me to do this battery? Okay, so then after the negative, oh, let's do the positive. Well, should we do the positive? Yeah, let's do the positive so we can, uh, let's do the positive so that we can tape it. It's kind of exposed right now. We don't want that. Test the voltage here, 26.2 volts, yep. I mean, how are we gonna charge it? Here are all the other ones. So here's the charger that I'm gonna use. It's a uh, Tanks, Tanks Power, lithium iron charger. It's for 7S, essentially. Um, I have it connected through here, through a bunch of these lids. But anyways, here's the uh, cord. So you connect it, boom. Then it starts charging. 
and it's putting three amps into this pack here. This is going to cut off the pack if it gets above any of the cells get above 4.2 volts and then it's gonna bleed that cell and it's gonna balance at the top. So there you go, this is this is how you put one of these packs together quickly and um, stay tuned for the next video where I show you how to make an extension pack for this solar generator next. Alright, thank you for watching this video, see you in the next one, bye.